Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is the Razzball Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am beat on. Joined by the Razzball co-founder, the man, the myth, the legend, Gray Albright. How you doing over there, Gray? Oh, hey, B. Don. What's going on, man? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I uh, just uh, just getting ready to talk about catchers, which is super exciting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is uh, this is clearly our favorite podcast of the year, Gray. Top top catchers. Uh, you know, that's that's exactly what we look forward to the entire off season is this podcast right here. Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't slept for three months waiting for this podcast. <laughs> so well, I, look had... forward, I look forward to finishing the podcast and maybe catching some Z's. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about like the top seven guys that we won't draft uh, and then we'll actually get into some guys we might draft. Uh, but hey, we'll at least give you, you know, the names in order of where we would take them, I guess, if we were to take catchers when other people do. Uh, so yeah, unless you're in a draft with us, uh, you, I mean, if you if you want to draft a bunch of catchers with us, perfectly fine, because we're not taking them. Uh, let's just start at the top, Gray. I, I'm just rambling here. Uh, first here, Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. Uh, you have Salvador Perez at one. Last year, he hit 23 home runs. 48 runs, 76 RBI, 254, 292, 465. He played 114 games. You have him down for 31 home runs, one stolen base, 68, 83, and a 257 average. Uh, I mean, he had kind of the hand, he had a hand thing that was off and on kind of all season. He had a back thing for a little bit. I, I mean, really, for Salvador, I feel like at his age, do you feel like in a position where plate appearances really seem to matter more than it does at most other positions? Do you think Salvi's still getting done? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, now you know. Uh, so here's. So this is interesting because uh, obviously, I I rank. You know, my rankings uh, were available on Patreon. Not a plug, but kind of. <laughs> my rankings were available on Patreon, like early December, late November. So I'm ranking way before most people are drafting. So now that there's been a bunch more uh, drafts done and I see ADP, I'm actually kind of surprised that Salvador Perez is going fifth out of catchers because I just assumed he would be one or two (laughs) at worst. I mean, he was, yeah, he was injured last year, but I mean, he's also like, essentially a 30 homer guy right i mean has any of that changed like last year again you know talking going back to our uh, our conversation we had about our in our our top 20 overall podcast our last podcast um uh, you know about recency bias uh, you know sal perez was going i think in the top 15 overall in some leagues last year because he was coming off of that huge 48 homer year when he hit 273. Uh, I didn't understand him going like that high uh, last year. I don't really understand him going fifth overall for catchers this year either. Like, I mean, he's still basically the best bet you have for a ton of games, you know, like last year, like you mentioned, he, uh, he was injured and he only had only played 114 games, but that was easily like throwing out uh, the year uh, 2020, uh, which I, I am sure we all wish we could do throwing out that year, like 114 games. That was by far his lowest total. And that really like, like he had to, <laughs> he had to basically like lose, uh, you know, he, he couldn't, play i mean he was basically like incapacitated in order for him to not play like he's always such a workhorse he's always out there i i mean i think i have him down for 564 at bats like you mentioned i don't know i mean that feels pretty conservative to be honest i i don't see why i mean maybe he goes out and gets injured again this year i don't know why like un- unless there's something I haven't you know heard about, I don't see why suddenly Salvador Perez is a you know an injury risk for this year. I mean, just because he was injured last year, that doesn't mean anything. So I don't know. I mean, people always do this though, because it's like, oh yeah, he was injured last year, so 
he's injured. He's going to be injured this year. Like what? No, huh? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily follow that logic. So yeah, I mean, and th- I'm not drafting Salvador Perez <laughs> anyway. Like you know, I you know going big picture here. Um, first, you know, I guess we should have said this first and foremost. I don't draft a catcher until around 200 overall for one catcher leagues. And in two catcher leagues, I usually loosen up my restrictions to about like, you know, 140, 150 overall. So there's no way I'm getting Salvador Perez either way. It's just not happening. Like he's going, even though he's the fifth catcher off the board, he's still going at like 60 overall in a two catcher league. And in a one catcher league, I, you know, I would, I haven't, I don't, I don't really have the ADP data yet for one catcher leagues, but I would assume a one catcher league, he's still going to go roughly like at the latest 75, 80 overall. So he's still going to be get, getting drafted very early for where I take a catcher, but you know, I'm just surprised he's not going even earlier. To be honest, I would take him if I were to type to take a catcher. I would take them before, you know, at least four of the guys who are going before, at least, no, uh, I would say at least three of the guys who are going before him out of the four. Like, I could see the case with Varsho and him because, I, you know, he's my number two catcher, which we'll get to. But, yeah, like Salvador Perez or Will Smith or Salvador Perez or Adelaide Rushman, I mean, these guys, ah, those are like easy calls. Maybe Real Muto or Salvador Perez maybe is a, you know, a little bit of a toss up, but I like a safe 30 homer, you know, guy, a catcher, which I you know. Uh, again, I'm repeating myself, but I'm not drafting him anyway. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think I'm a little bit more uh, on the side that I have him in the four or five range. I think like what you, you're going to get from him and Will Smith is probably about the same. So I, I really don't have any problem with him anywhere in this one through five range. Catcher is one of those positions specifically there where the turnover year to year is is bigger because they have so much other thing so much other stuff to do staying healthy and staying in, in a good hitting rhythm is is kind of the second part of their job other than after dealing with the pitchers so they can fluctuate more than almost any other position in what they're going to give you year to year I, I would say i don't necessarily have salvador perez as a 30 home run guy he's done it once in his career I would say he's mid twenties, um, but still hitting in the middle of a lineup, playing most days, um, giving you an average that it's not going to hurt you. What your catcher is is something worthwhile. Uh, so I, I also don't have a problem with him coming at one. Like you said, neither of us are drafting a catcher more than likely in a one catcher league. Like if if Salvador Perez happens to fall to a hundred, I might take him just because at that point then I might not feel so bad about it um, because he's fallen to there, but that's probably not happening in most leagues anyways. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's fair. I, I, I think that's a good uh, thing to uh, point out that really drafting a catcher, it's like how much guilt do you want to, uh, how much <laughs> guilt can you handle? <laughs> can you handle, can you handle the guilt of me seeing you drafted a catcher high and being like, oh man, be done. You really, uh, really need to be host. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I, I mean, that's it. Do you want to host this podcast or do you want to draft the catcher high? It's up to you, man. All <laughs> right. So number two is Dal- Dalton Farsho traded to the Jays. Presumably he's he's not going to play catcher very much for them. He's, he's going to stay in the outfield. Uh, but that is nice for catcher purposes because then he doesn't have the normal stuff that I just talked about with the catcher where he has to manage the pitchers and do all of that. And he's likely to play in maybe as many games or more games than any other catcher. Last year he went 27 home runs, 16 stolen bases, 79, 74, and a 235 average in 151 games. You have him down for 22 home runs, 13 stolen bases, 71, 81, and 242. I mean, I guess Dalton Varsho every now and then prorating a partial season does kind of work because that's basically what he did. Was he he, he just prorated his 2021 over more at bats in 2022? 
Yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I didn't think of it like that. But yeah, you're right. It's like ev eventually Mr. Prorator makes sense. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> one Finally. time. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah, it never worked for Alberto Mondesi, <laughs> but it worked for Dalton Varshaw. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he like you said. You said one thing there that I uh, I'll take issue with. I don't know if he won't catch enough games. He might, uh, you know, because like at some point, uh, Alejandro Kirk, you know, is going to be rested, and Danny Jansen stinks. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. Like they may want to get the guys rested, and they know Varsho can catch. So. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, you know, throwing it out there that he could potentially keep catcher eligibility for next year and, and at least Yahoo leagues, which is like, I don't know, 10 games played. Um, I think he already so. qualified for catcher in Yahoo leagues for like 2026. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I think Schwarber just lost his like last year. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Anthony Rizzo is still a second base <laughs> for Yahoo. It's like, uh, yeah, we, we updated our system. <laughs> don't don't look at that. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, so I think uh, Dalton Varsho has like, I mean, uh, uh, Rio Muto is only the uh, second catcher in history to go 2020. I think Dalton Varsho has at least a, you know, I don't know, maybe a, a 10%. Actually, we'll say 20%. He's got a 20% chance of going 2020 uh, to keep it uh, all round numbers. Now, I mean, he's got somewhat of a chance. I would say, like, you know, I don't know necessarily how much of a chance, but it, it's there. Like, it's out there. there it's a possibility because Varsho can steal. Like you said, he stole 16 bases last year. I mean, it wouldn't be a dramatic step up for him to go 2020. So, yeah, I mean, that has value for sure. I would say, you know, he's even, for me, he's like one guy who I've actually really, you know, I, I struggled with uh, with his rankings on how high to put him because he's actually kind of alluring even as a, outfielder like he's not necessarily a catcher only guy in my mind like I could see I could see the case to be made for him to be like a you know a, a uh, I don't know I don't I don't want to say first catcher I mean excuse me first outfielder um because he's kind of a weak first outfielder if we're being honest but if he's like a second outfielder like if he falls a little bit as a second outfielder eh, it's not bad I you know I I wouldn't necessarily kick it out of bed, but yeah, I mean, this is probably, it's probably a moot point because he's going way earlier than I'm willing to like, look at him. Like uh, on average, he's going at 35 overall. Uh, and that's in a two catcher league and a one catcher league. Like I said, I'm not sure where he's going to go. I wouldn't be surprised if he's going, you know, as early as 45 50 overall in one catcher leagues even uh because of the outfield eligibility is still you know he's still decent as an outfielder a 2020 bet i mean it's not far off from randy rosarina really i mean it's not like you know it's not dramatically different from that so yeah i like him i like far show i'm not gonna end up having him this year i had him last year in one league uh, where, you know, I, it was a two-catcher league. I drafted him around 150 overall. He worked out great. That league, I still came in third. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> if a good catcher. I still needed other things. It didn't help me enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm with you on pretty much what you, everything you said. I, I mean, he's going to give you power speed from a catcher position. That's very rare. It's not 35th overall rare in my mind. I mean, the numbers he's ultimately going to give you are the numbers that you would expect out of somebody more in like the 85 to 100 range. So, again, if he drops to like 85 to 100, maybe I'll take a shot on him. But since that's probably not happening, not going to end up on a lot of my rosters. But, I mean, he is. He's going to give you... 20, 25 home runs. He's going to steal 10 to 15 bases, maybe more with all the rule changes and everything. Maybe he's one of those guys that can kind of add a few. Um, so I don't hate having him as your second catcher. I just don't love where he gets drafted. Uh, pretty much what you said, Greg. Yeah, Moving on to number 
Number three, your third catcher is actually the, I mean, consensus number one at the position. And again, it's a little bit of just the, you know, what what have you done for me lately? Uh, last year, JT Real Muto went 22 home runs, 21 stolen bases, 75, 84, 276. In 139 games, you have him down for 17 home runs, 15 stolen bases, 66, 73 in a 266 average. Uh, I mean, clearly, since he's number one at the position, you have him three, Gray, you hate him. So why do you hate JT yeah. Real Muto? Uh, you know, it, it, this is honestly, I just realized this right now. Uh, I don't know if this is illuminating or not, but <laughs> I'm going I'm to say it anyway, because really, I mean, how much of this really is illuminating? So uh, Real Muto... In 2021, he went, he hit 17 homers, stole 13 bags, and hit 263. I have him projected for slightly better stats. And it's, and I, and I'm the one who looks like a lunatic because I don't have him number one. Like, like just, just going into last year, this is who we were looking at. And now he's 32 years old. It's like, I mean, I I know it's like a broken record with the recency bias thing, but it's like, yeah. I mean, JT Real Muto was great last year. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be great again this year. Like, I don't think – I don't see the steals, really. Like, of course, he stole 21 bags last year. As we keep talking about with the uh, limited pickoffs, I mean, it, you know, steals could be up. I don't, I don't know. I mean – Expecting steals from a catcher is just like, uh, it feels like you're chasing the wrong thing. You know, it's like it's so easily, I mean, every game, every game he gets like beat up. Every game, every catcher gets beat up. They get beat up, uh, you know, uh, going out there and getting foul tips off of their legs, off of their hands. Like things happen all the time that you just, I, I would not trust a catcher for steals unless it's like a Varsha where he's going to be playing outfield. So, you know, that's, you know, that's a little bit different, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he does steal 20 bags again. I wouldn't expect it. You know, steamer, it looks like steamer's got him down for 12 steals in uh, 129 games, uh, which is 497 at bats. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I'm just, I, it's not. I don't even feel like I'm down on Real Muto, which is the weird thing. Like I said, I'm actually above where he was in 2021. Like I'm, I'm still expecting decent stats from him, but I just don't see. You know, like I said earlier, 2020 year has only happened twice for catchers in the history of baseball. Real Muto's last year was a 2020 year. And I wouldn't expect you know the the random 2020 year again from him. I don't know. I just, it just me, but I, I'm not drafting them anyway. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree on the stolen bases. It's not something that, I, I mean, I would project, wouldn't ever project him for another 20 steal campaign. I would say he sits around 10 to low teens, which is where, you know, you have him. I think you have him at, at 12 or 13 stolen bases. Uh, you have him at 13. So, I mean, that seems... That seems like the right area, especially as you mentioned, he's going to be a 32-year-old catcher. It's not about the speed. He has the speed. Like, if you look at just pure sprint speed, he's he's has plenty of that to steal bases. It's the fact that he's a catcher. It's the fact that he's in the middle of the lineup. I just don't necessarily see him running at that pace again. Um, so, yes, I'm, I'm with you, Gray. I, I think uh, – and that doesn't mean I actually don't like him at number one – at the position because he's going to give you 20 home runs, 10 stolen bases, and a, you know, a 260, 270 average. That's not terrible, but that that's what it is. I, I just don't see the 2020 thing happening again, so I'm with you. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on to Will Smith, who is is a guy that I like uh, quite a bit at the position. I mean, I, there's really nothing not to like. He seems to be maybe the one consistent catcher in, in the whole – group of, of catchers honestly that maybe we have an idea of what he produces somewhat year to year uh last year he went 24 home runs one stolen base 68 87 and 260 across 137 games you have him down for 25 home runs one stolen base 71 83 and a 258 average i mean it's that's what you get from will smith right i mean you get 25 home runs you get a 260 average and everything that comes with that yeah, 
<laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, he's just, yeah. I mean, he's really, you know, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, Dave Roberts seems to, you know, really be willing to either play him as much as he wants to play, or you know, also with the depleted Dodgers lineup, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get some DH at bats. So yeah, I mean, he's definitely. I mean, well, JD Martinez, I guess, is there now. So, uh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> but <laughs> unless JD wants to catch, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. Will Smith plays a lot. He's like a solid 25 homer ish guy with good RBIs, decent runs for a catcher. It hits like, I think he's like a 261 hitter for his career. And he's always, it's not even like he hits two, you know, if he hits like 300 one year and 220 another year, like he's always essentially in that range. Like he's always pretty much exactly what you expect from him. So yeah, he's real, he's a steady performer. Again, I'm, I'm not drafting him, but yeah, no, he's fine. Yeah. I mean, uh, it'd be great if he, we, he didn't up on my team, but um, yeah, at least you know what you're getting with him. And again, like I said, he's the one consistent person in this entire group of, of just complete nonsense that happens at catcher year to year uh, seemingly. So if you're drafting catcher for kind of presumed production, I mean, Will Smith's your guy moving on to your second tier here. No little Keanu's here. Actually, I'd say, uh, sorry, not to, uh, sorry, didn't yeah. mean to interrupt, uh, but Will Smith is actually, that's a good point you bring up because like if the people who drafted catchers high, were were at all rational? <laughs> they would draft Will Smith because <laughs> I mean he is a safe one. Like these people are chasing catchers and they're drafting them high, yet they're going for guys who are like either one year they're really good and one year they're not good, or one year they're you know one year they're terrible and next year they're great. It's like draft Will Smith if you're so you know. I, I guess I'm trying to speak to. A, Irrational person, forget it. <laughs> He's talking to a rational person about drafting a hot catcher high, Gray. What? What? <laughs> no, but I mean, to your point though, we look at like JT Romuto, who is has been consistently been one of the top catchers in his career, like year in year out. He's a top five catcher. It, like he is so inconsistent year over year. Like he went going back to 2017, went 17 eight. 278. Next year he went 21 3 277. 25 9 11 and 4 17 13 and then 22 21. Like there's there's really no he, he does it 270, like 270 to 80. He's consistent on average, but like the home runs have been anywhere from 17 to 25. The stolen base has been anywhere from 3 to 21. Like which which JT right? are you getting? <laughs> Right. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like if the people who are drafting catchers high were rational, they just go for Will Smith. Will Smith, <laughs> 25 like, home runs, 260, oh, 60, yeah. 70. Like, that's that's great numbers from your catcher. If you're going to if you're going to spend up the early pick, you might as well at least get the production right. that you're expecting to get. Seriously. Um, be rational, people. Come on. Okay. All right. Let's move All right. On. Moving on to uh, a catcher that's probably he probably doesn't fit the rational brain because really you're you're just waiting for him to to build on what he started to do last year, and that is Adley Rushman in 2022. He went 13 home runs, four stolen bases, 70 runs, 42 RBIs, 254, and 113 games. You have him down for 18, five, 79 runs, 60. One RBIs and a 271 average and 491 at bats. I mean, he's he's the catcher darling. He is, uh, you know, the guy we've been waiting for. He's supposed to be the next Buster Posey. Uh, he was supposed to be better than Buster Posey. He's supposed to be what we promised from Buster Posey. Uh, I don't know if I see it just yet, Gray. But where are you at on Adley? Uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. I just looked up where Rudy has uh, Adley in his rankings, and he comes in at 221 overall. <laughs> <laughs> just after Dylan Carlson, Miles Nicholas, and Jose Leclerc. <laughs> ah! Ah! That is that was a good, that was an, an enjoyable laugh. I mean, I you know what? And I agree. <laughs> 
I don't, I don't agree necessarily. I wouldn't rank them quite that low, but that is, you know, I think that's sort of like, uh, it's a little bit of a, it's illustrative, illustrative of one thing though, that like, you know, the, the rankings for him versus the projections for Adelaide is like <laughs> night and day, man. Like there's no projections anywhere saying necessarily like top 100 let alone, like, where is he getting drafted? He's getting drafted at 57 overall. There's no rankings anywhere saying anything close to that. Like, talk about, like, being irrational. <laughs> My God, man. Like, you guys are like, whoever's <laughs> drafting Adelaide Rushman at, like, in the top 60 overall is totally irrational. Like, I honestly, like, don't get into an elevator with that person because they're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> just, just avoid them because they're crazy. Sorry, but they're a little nutty. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I, I'd love to ask someone who drafts, like, uh, Adelaide Rushman at, like, 60 overall. Like, I'd like to sit them down and just, find, like, pick their brain as to what they actually expect from him. <laughs> like, what do you expect? Are you expecting, like, even if, like, last year in 113 games, he hit 13 homers and stole four bags. So are you expecting the Orioles to play 226 games this year? <laughs> because in order to get anywhere close to 25 homers, he's going to have to play like 200 games. So I don't know. Is that what people are expecting? I don't know what anyone's expecting with Adelaide Rushman. I really don't. It's it's mind-boggling that anyone is drafting him as high as he's going. But, yeah, I, I'm not drafting him. Yeah, I mean, I see where people are coming from. They're basically taking – they're, I mean, they're doing Mr. Pro Raider here with the second half. He went – he had eight home runs. He hit 275 and had almost a 400 on base. So they're taking that. They're saying, okay, second half shorter than the first half. So maybe he hits 20, 24 <laughs> home runs. He hits 280. And, you know, if he gets on base at 400 <laughs> – even, but yeah, even in your that's even where it's in, coming even from. In, even in your like dream casting, you can't get him to like number like anywhere close to top like sixty overall numbers. <laughs> like even with you saying like even you doing a galaxy brain type projection where you're like yeah twenty five homers two eighty that's still not top sixty. That's like <laughs> that's like barely that's like what i mean you're talking about you just basically described trey mancini <laughs> that's like what is 25 homers and 280 like uh okay i don't know i mean i guess if anthony rizzo has a good average i don't know 25 homers and 280 in the top 60 not for me thank you <laughs> well, it's not for either of us, Greg, because we're not drafting catchers there. But if you are drafting catchers there, like he's, I mean, 275, 24, that's basically Will Smith plus a little bit of average. So, I mean, I, I get if you're taking catchers, why he goes in the, as a top five guy. Again, we're not taking them because you're vaulting up, again, such a mediocre <laughs> stat line because of a position just seems... Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense to either Gray or I, honestly. Yeah, um, so yeah. moving on to our next guy, Gray, at number six, and that's Alejandro Kirk. Last year, he had 14 home runs, 59 runs, 63 RBI, and he hit 285 in 139 games. You have him down for 16 home runs, 66 runs, 77 RBI, 282 average. I mean, Alejandro yeah. Kirk, I mean, it feels like maybe he is – as safe for what he's going to do as like Will Smith is, but just a whole lot more boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, he's another one where you're like, mm, I don't know. I mean, I, it's like, how late can I possibly rank some of these guys? Like I have, like I have Alejandro Kirk and you know, um, like I'm not drafting him probably because he's going, he's getting, you know, drafted before I would take a catcher. Like, I would draft him. Like, honestly, I'd be happy about drafting him at, like, I don't know, 180 overall. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 180, 200. I mean, I don't know. In a two-catcher league, maybe I would, like, reach at 150, 160. I mean, he's he's fine. I don't, like, I don't dislike him. 
But then you look at his numbers and you're like, mm, he's a 15 homer hitter. <laughs> 15 know, homer man. guy. It's like literally no <laughs> speed. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like to draft him at like, where's he? His ADP is at 90. Uh, to draft him there feels a little early. I'll be honest. <laughs> feels a little bit, a little bit too soon. But I don't know. Uh, people are doing it. Yeah, people are doing it. And I mean, I guess he's he's projected to sit in the middle of the lineup for the for Blue Jays. That's that's rare for a catcher to be sitting mid lineup. So I mean, I guess that's part of it. But yeah, I mean, it's just such a boring stat line to be taking. Um, but that's what yeah. you're looking at at like six at catcher is middle of the lineup or yeah, yeah, three hundred. He had three hundred and thirteen at bats, batting third and and fourth last year combined and he had 59 runs and 63 rbis <laughs> we <laughs> <woo! laughs> what do you do i will say uh, he's, he's yeah. one of the like uh a, a lot of the catchers are swing and miss a lot of them don't walk uh he is a guy that has good plate discipline so you know if you're just looking for a catcher that's not going to give you crazy swings i guess that's him but again going going very early in drafts, uh, inside the top hundred, pretty easily yeah. is is not not worth fourteen home runs. No. Uh, next up is Wilson Contreras, who actually led the position, I, I think, on the player radar for a long time last year until he kind of fell off a little bit. But he went twenty two home runs, four stolen bases, sixty five, fifty five, two forty three. You have now for twenty three home runs, five stolen bases, seventy four, sixty eight, and two forty seven. This. I mean, Contreras, it hurt. It hurts to watch him not be in the Chicago Cubs uniform. Any concerns with Contreras kind of moving over to St. Louis? I mean, I've always loved Contreras, but you're getting a 20, 25 home run guy who's going to hit 240. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's always like, like uh, you know, at least for the last three years, he's hit like around 240 and. He's a 22 homer guy. He's like basically Will Smith minus like a you know uh, a couple homers and 25 points on average, give or take. Yeah, yep. I mean he he's fine. I I don't again he's probably going before I'm drafting him. Uh, he's getting close. I I think he's close. He'll probably be close in one catcher leagues. You know like. Like I said earlier, we're looking at two catcher ADP, so that you know that's a little bit skewed. Like there's definitely there's a little bit here of like Wilson Contreras is going at you know 93 overall for two catcher leagues. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like around 130 ish, like for one catcher league, which is you know not quite at where I'm drafting a catcher, but we're real close to it. Like you know I think. I think the next guy, uh, his brother. Well, go ahead. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I will say Wilson Contreras tends to be one of those guys that falls to a place that I, I will draft a catcher. So I do occasionally end up with him. But also he was a Cubs. So that also biased me towards maybe drafting him in the past. Now he's on the St. Louis Cardinals. I don't know that I will reach for him at all. Um, but it's still very consistent in what he's giving you. And I'm not worried about him moving teams because he's going inside – same division. There's really nothing changing except he's moving to a new ballpark, and I don't really see that as much of an issue. Moving on to your next your next tier, where you said that you might start actually drafting from in a one catcher league, and that is William Contreras. Last year he went no, 20 home catcher, runs, yeah. two catcher league. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, 20 home runs, two two stolen bases, 51, 45, 278 in 97 games. You have him down for 23 home runs. One stolen base, 62, 77, 247, and 446 at bats. I mean, is it William Contreras is, is I mean, it's like we copied Contreras's. <laughs> yeah, it does feel that way. But it feels like we've we've copied and then made the copy a little bit better. <laughs> just just a, a hair better. Because, <laughs> uh, like, his average feels like, I mean... Last year he had a high Babbitt, but he's had high Babbitts in the past in the minors at least. So I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe he's exactly the same as uh, you know his older brother. Maybe he's maybe he's more or less exactly uh, the same hitter. But 
I don't know. I feel like because maybe because he's just younger, there's a little bit of like, you know, an allure that he could have a little bit of upside. And also, I think the team change probably it, the team change it, it helps him. I mean, I don't think, you know, going to a place where he's definitely the catcher, whereas like in Atlanta, well, when he was there, he was behind uh, Travis Day or no. Uh, now they have Sean Murphy, which we'll get to. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, now that he's in Milwaukee, um, that's William Contreras. I think he's going to have, like, every day at bats, for which is, for a catcher, it still means, like, you know, roughly 450 to 470 at bats. I mean, it's still on the, on the low side uh, because, you know, they get rested once every – you know, four games or whatever. So, yeah, I think, but I think Contreras is definitely going to be, I don't know. I'm excited about Contreras. I don't know. Now I'm not saying like we said, you know, at this point I'm willing to draft a catcher. That doesn't mean I'm willing to reach for one. I'll draft (laughs) one. I'm not, I'm not reaching, Uh, you know, like if he falls, like, and I could see in a one catcher league, him potentially falling a bit, but in a two catcher league, if he's around, like, you know, like right now he's at 112 overall. Uh, he's going as late as 134. So, you know, according to those numbers, this is also for ADP of the last two weeks. Uh, I, you know, I got rid of all the uh, 2022 data. So anyway, for, uh, you know, if William Contreras is going at 134, I'm probably not getting him. <laughs> I mean, we'll be honest. But if he falls just like another maybe round or two, yeah, I mean, it could happen. I don't know. I, I would I would hope so because uh, I do like him a lot. I, I actually think he's like one of the few guys that we've talked about where he actually has upside. I don't know how much necessarily, but – I mean, if you just look at his, like, you know, stats, he's always hit well. He's come up and he kept hitting. He's, you know, young. I think he's – I don't even think he's anywhere near as peaked out on his power as we've seen. And he already had 20 homers in 97 games. So I could see potential 30-homer year from a, a guy like William Contreras. I like him a lot. Um, we'll see if I'm able to draft him now. Yeah, I could see the power taking a bump in that new park in Milwaukee. Um, you know, it's always been a favorable hitter's place. I, I think the average is the piece where I think I could see that kind of going up and down, just depending on like him getting on the right streak and really seeing the ball well or not. Um, he does have a little bit of strikeout in his, you know, just the profile that you're looking at. He has the 28% or just under 28% last year on the K rate. So that would be my only concern from concern with him but i do agree that this is one of those spots where there is some upside we could potentially be talking about william Contreras as i mean he could be potentially be the number one catcher next year like number one on the player radar if he gets kind of that miller park bump in in power and he just maintains the average that he was kind of working with last year mm-hmm. yeah agreed all right moving on to another guy that has some upside, maybe a little bit more uh, risky upside, but MJ Melendez, last year he had 18 home runs, two stolen bases, 57, 62. He hit 217, 313, 393 in 129 games. You have him down for 22 home runs, three stolen bases, 74, 66, 229, and 486 at-bats. He has he has the pop gray. I don't know if he can put the ball on the bat enough to make that uh, an in-game power number jump a little bit. Yeah, I know. Well, it's interesting, though, because he's, like, not necessarily, like, an insane uh, high strikeout guy. But, mm-hmm. yeah, he does He does struggle to hit for a decent average. And he did And he did so even in the minors at, at different stops. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think there could be there could be some worry here that his average, like, you know, stays either around 215 like it was last year or, or maybe even drops a little bit hopefully it doesn't i i still i mean i have him for 229 i think he could probably you know probably get up maybe as high as 235 240 if he gets like you know a little bit of luck on his babbit and a uh and a, he increases his uh you know his uh plate discipline uh, he does, does walk a lot 
So he's just got to swing at the right pitches. You know, I like him. Again, he's another guy who's like, you know, in two catcher leagues, I don't see myself being able to get him because he's just going too high. But I could see, like, it depends on where he falls. Like, maybe not in my leagues, but I could see some people who are listening to this. Like, he feels like MJ Menendez, at least, feels like a guy who could potentially fall into, like, the 170, 200 overall range in, like, friends and family, one catcher type leagues. I could see that happening. It, it wouldn't shock me if someone was like, oh, I just drafted uh, Melendez at like 225. It wouldn't shock me, honestly. It, like two catcher leagues in NFBC and the leagues I'm in aren't necessarily indicative of what, you know, uh, the the normal leagues are going to be doing with a guy like Menendez. I mean, what, that'll more... That'll probably fall more on like where Yahoo and ESPN rank him. If they rank him like I think, which is probably after 200, I could see him falling in drafts. It wouldn't shock me. So, you know, there's a chance people could draft him. I don't know if I'm going to be able to draft him, but someone else might be able to. I like him. <laughs> I, like the, I like the shot on him. Yeah, I like taking the shot on him as kind of an upside play. Like I said, I, I think he has real power. It's just trying to take that power, put it in game to where he, the average comes up and the power, it, it actually plays up in, you know, in the form of home runs. Um, but there is, there's definitely some room for upside here. So I, I wouldn't mind taking him. And then if it doesn't work out, especially in a one catcher, friends and family type of thing, you can always drop him and go find, you know, a, a boring guy to, to fill in the, the space if he doesn't work out. Um, and I, I think you're right that you can definitely get these guys, some of these guys later in those leagues, because the younger they are, the less they're known about, the less they tend to get drafted. And then when we're talking about like ESPN style leagues, a lot of times they don't really take the shot on the, you know, up and comers. Uh, it's just a ri- riskier ranking. Totally. Yeah, no, agreed. And also, uh, I think with Melendez, he goes back to also what I was saying with uh, you know uh, the uh, the what you call it um, Dalton Varsho, or at least I think you were saying it with the him playing outfield. You know Melendez probably is going to play a lot of DH, so he could even like he can get really good counting stats for a catcher, even though it's with the Royals. Like I could, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get like seventy runs and and seventy or at least sixty. It's depending on where he is in the lineup right now, I see him hitting leadoff, which, you know, uh, I mean, I, I don't think he really makes sense as a leadoff guy, no. but he did he did hit leadoff last year. <laughs> so it's not crazy to think he could le- hit leadoff again. Um, but that was also uh, Melanthe, who's I've, uh, gone. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they, need to rethi- they need to rethink that. I mean, I know Modesty is not going to be healthy <laughs> for <laughs> – 15 games, but he makes more sense at lead off and Melendez could hit fifth, but I don't know. I, I don't know the, I don't know the Royals lineup yet. Um, but yeah, I think Melendez could potentially get 500 at bats, which is a lot for a catcher. Yeah, I I'm with you. I think the DH probably helps him. I think him and, um, between him and Salvi, they may have the most combined DH, uh, at, at bats for a catcher for a team. Uh, mainly because most other teams have somebody better to put there. But, hey, it's the Kansas City Royals. I, I really don't believe he sticks it at leadoff. I really hope that that's not how they're going about it. But you're right. I mean, he did spend some time there last year. It's it's not out of the realm of possibility when we're talking about Kansas City. Uh, moving on to number 10, and that is Tyler Stevenson. Last year he had six home runs. He had one stolen base, 24, 35, th- hit 319 in only 50 games. He had a bunch of injuries, Gray. Uh, you have him down for 16 home runs, one stolen base, 61, 67, 284, and 443 at-bats. I mean, Tyler Stevenson's a guy that I, I, I think we both kind of liked last year that we were saying we might draft because he was falling a little bit. Uh, I'm still I'm still kind of in on him. Oh, yeah, no, completely. Actually, he was the guy I drafted in my first draft Champions League, which is a two-catcher league. So, yeah, I took Tyler Stevenson as my first catcher. Uh, I'm I'm absolutely in. I would draft him in every league. I have no problem with 
Tyler Stevenson. I think uh, if anything, you know, is this doesn't probably make any sense, but, but if anything, I'm kind of more in on him now because <laughs> I feel like he didn't play last year, so he's going to be even fresher. I don't know. That probably makes no sense, but that's how I'm. That's how I'm approaching it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a catcher it could it definitely could be in something just to be fresh, not having you know sat behind the plate for 130 games. Um, I mean, he's not going to give you a lot of power, but he's he's going to be in a good place in the lineup. He's going to play a lot, and he actually hits for a pretty solid average. So it just depends on kind of what you're looking for at catcher. If you're looking for the upside shot, maybe you're going with Melendez. If you just want a guy that will give you average, some runs and RBI and not kill you, it's probably Tyler Stevenson. Right. Yeah, no, completely. And he's another guy who – Like, even though I said I drafted him and his uh, ADP is around 130 for two catcher leagues, he's another guy who, like, we're in this whole, like, this whole tier kind of feels like guys who in one catcher leagues and Yahoo and ESPN and even fan fan tracks, like, in one catcher leagues, these guys are probably going to drop. There's, like, there's no reason anyone needs to reach for a catcher in a one catcher league, so... I wouldn't be surprised if Tower Stevenson is available to uh, to people to draft at like, you know, later than uh, 190, 200 overall. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think you can probably wait on Tyler Stevenson. Again, he was injured. He doesn't put up gaudy home run or stolen base numbers. So uh, for that reason, a lot of people just kind of skip over him and draft somebody else. But I really do think you can do a lot worse at catcher than Tyler Stevenson. Moving on to number 11, which may be kind of the balance between Melendez and Stevenson if you're looking for a little bit of upside, but also maybe not crazy if Jay Melendez, you know, uh, inconsistency. Sean Murphy, last year he had 18 home runs, one stolen base. He had 67 66, but he featured 148 games. Uh, this year you have projected for 20 home runs, one stolen base, 66 73, 244, and 502 at bats. Uh, I, I mean, I don't mind sh- getting Sean Murphy. He's he's another one who was on the move this offseason. We talked about him a little bit, I think, when we did the trades. Um, but he's moving on to Atlanta. What do you actually? I don't know if we did, Gray. I think this might have happened after winter meetings. Um, so, what do you think about Sean Murphy and his his new digs? Yeah, no, I think uh, I, I like him again. I, I'm still a, a fan. I still think uh, there's a good chance that I'm going to be drafting him in a lot of leagues. He was the guy who, you know, I was I was happy to have him in, in some leagues last year, and I could see drafting him again. He's he's actually – he's probably a little bit underrated. Um, in two-catcher leagues, he's still going around like 120 overall, so that's still a little bit high. But in a, uh, a one-catcher league – I probably he's probably right. He's going to be there at like 200 to 210 overall or something. So you just grab him at the end of your draft or, you know, when you're filling out your your final positions. I think, uh, you know, he's got like you said, I mean, I don't think he's got a ton of upside, uh, but he should be in a good lineup in the middle of it. So, yeah, I mean, there could be a chance here where he has like a, a, a lucky year for runs and RBIs because you know he shouldn't. He won't kill you necessarily in average. Uh, he's a career two thirty six hitter, but you know we're talking about catcher, so two thirty six ain't that bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not like he's gonna hit two oh five. So he should be okay. I think uh, last year he hit two fifty. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits you know two forty or higher. He's fine. I mean he's not. He's not. I don't think he's gonna blow you away necessarily, but he's probably a good decent bet for like. A you know he's actually in you know what kind of league he's really good in is like a a one catcher fifteen team league so you know like uh, like a, a league where you only have one catcher but you have a, a more teams so you don't necessarily have the uh, the same waivers uh, you know like in a twelve team league there's so many guys on waivers that you really should punt catcher completely but yeah. in a fifteen team league there's a little bit less on waivers so like in a league like that. Sean Murphy's a, a decent uh, draft pick there because, you know, he's going to play for sure as much as they can possibly let him play. Like, he, he he's always, like, at least last year, 
He played 148 games. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he pushes 500 at bats this year. He seems to like, he seems to play a lot. So that's good for runs and RBIs. You know, he's not necessarily going to, I mean, if you look at his numbers and see like, you know, 20 homers and uh, 245 average for his projections. It's not really that far off from like Will Smith, who is going, who is getting drafted like 100 picks before him. Yeah, I was actually just going to say, this is kind of the next step. We talked about like Will Smith down, the next step down from him is like Wilson Contreras, which is kind of the same power, less average. And the next step is like Sean Murphy, which is maybe a little less power and maybe a little bit more inconsistent. The average inconsistency with the average, but like all three of those guys are capable of giving you 260, 20, 25 home runs. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised by that from any of them. Will Smith's just like almost a lock to do it, whereas the other two kind of need to have a little bit, maybe bounce in their favor. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to trying to inject some enthusiasm into the into catchers, the into the in, into twenty home yeah. runs, two yeah. forty. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pump, pump for twenty two forty, Greg. I'm pumped. I'm pumped for twenty <laughs> homers and two forty average. We're, we're yeah. not even out of the 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 catcher ones for a twelve team league yet, Greg. <laughs> Yeah, Number like, 12 is Cal Raleigh, though. You have or Last year, he went 27 home runs, one <laughs> stolen base, 46, 63, 211, and 119 games. You have him down for 20 home runs, one stolen base, 53, 60, and a 219 average. Uh, I mean, maybe some power upside here, but it's gonna it might come with some bottom in out of the average. Yeah, no, completely. I think he's he's actually what I was saying earlier about the uh, the average for uh, what's we call it. Um, was I saying about Menendez? I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, with uh, his uh, like Menendez's average was coming with a uh, a decent strikeout rate. Like Cal Raleigh also strikes out a lot and doesn't hit for a good average. So <laughs> not a great not a great combo. But yeah, I think the power is good even in. Uh, Seattle, which is, you know, that's, that's pretty, that's hard. That's not necessarily, everyone can't hit for power there. Uh, paging Jesse Winker. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think, I think Cal Riley's a solid bet. Like he might actually be like, you know, I, I, I have him projected for essentially Sean Murphy minus, you know, 30 points on average, but I could actually, you know, Cal Raleigh, I think, has upside. He's he's not he's nowhere near maxed out uh, at 26 years old. I could see potentially him getting to, you know, maybe 30 homers. I, I don't have him projected for that. <laughs> don't, get, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a great possibility, but that possibility is out there. I mean, it's it, it could happen. <laughs> it could. It could. It, it definitely could. And I will say, like, when he spent a full year at a stop, he seems to kind of, uh, the K rate may bounce a little bit, but it kind of does drop down. So if he can just kind of control the case, he was at 29% last year. Not good. That's not a good K rate. But if he can just drop that to like 25%, get down to where we're talking about where Melendez is, it's kind of that 25% range. I, I do think there might be a little bit of upside there just for the average to come up. Uh, if he could just move, remove some of the Ks, because I don't think his eye is terrible. He's always walked. Um, he, he walked even last year. He just just doesn't put the bat on the ball all the time. Yeah. and But when he does, he hits it pretty he hard. I mean, yeah, it goes pretty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, his hard hit percentage was good last year, and he hit a lot of fly balls. So, yeah, I mean, he hit the ball hard in the air. I mean, if it could happen. If we're looking at guys who are, are potentially moving up into that top catcher area, I mean, I could potentially see Cal doing it. Like, I think I see him doing it a little bit easier than Melendez, even though Melendez maybe has a little bit more pedigree in like historically. But I don't even know if that's true, um, really, because Cal's just got to get the a K rate. I think he hits the ball with a little bit more authority than Melendez right now. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm semi interested in Cal Raleigh. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm. I, I don't want to discourage that because I like Cal Raleigh as well. I would draft him like I have him as my 12th catcher in my rankings. I would totally draft him in a one catcher league in a in a 12 team league. I would take Cal Raleigh. I wouldn't, you know, I 
I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, uh, draft him high <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> like I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach at like 130 and be like, yeah, I really need a catcher and everyone's drafting them. So I'm taking a catcher now. I, I wouldn't do that necessarily with Cal Raleigh, but I would, you know, in a, in a two catcher league, I'd be more than happy to have them. In a one catcher league, I would draft him as well. I would just, you know, probably wait until wait. like yeah. <laughs> two twenty overall. Like, it, like everyone else, like ten people have a catcher, and I'm playing chicken with the twelve team. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> who's, who's gonna take a catcher first? And that's like someone, someone has Varsho as their outfielder, and I'm like, oh, I gotta take a catcher. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. And the other person who who uses the war room in in your draft, waiting to catch as well <laughs> yeah cal raleigh i don't know um let me see actually let's see uh cal raleigh is uh i wouldn't be surprised if he's above no he's not i was gonna say above adelaide russia he's not above adelaide he's at 309 overall <laughs> but the, you know what the rudy's all rudy's cat because rudy really uh punts catcher so his all his catcher um all his catcher, whatchamacallits, are really low. His catcher rankings are super low. So, and, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't doesn't not make sense if, if that double negative makes sense. I mean, it's like catchers are not good for the most part. So, yeah. No, no, they're not. But, uh, like I said, I, I think Raleigh is a nice one to, if you're waiting and you want some upside, like, that's, I think that's where I'm going. Even over Melendez, I think I'll just wait and take take Cal. Uh, I mean, 12th in barrel rate, Gray. Uh, I mean, that's that's not nothing. That's that's hard to do. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he's right behind O'Neill Cruz in barrel rate, right above Jock Peterson, which uh, doesn't make it as impressive hearing Jock Peterson's right after him. Um, but, you know, heavy split guy, <laughs> Jock Peterson. He's always put the barrel on the ball as well. Um, coming in at 13, old man Travis D'Arno. Uh, last year, he had 18 home runs. He had 61 runs, 60 RBIs, 268, and 170 games. You have him down for 15 oh, home hold runs. On, hold on a second. Can we pause? Yep. Okay. Uh, is it possible to uh, – because I'm sorry. I, oh, this is free. Yeah. It's free Murphy pre, news. Pre, yeah, I forgot to move it in that uh, in the Patreon. Um, I have – let me see where the podcast uh, is because I didn't change that much, but I did. I did move Travis there or now. Um, yeah, I was. I was just gonna. Ask. <laughs> okay, I have uh, Ruiz is still in the third. It's still in the third tier. I have. I moved Ruiz up to thirteen, and then I have uh, uh, Montero, Heim, Diaz. Uh, let's see if anything else has changed. Haas. Vasquez, Gary Sanchez is a free agent still. Uh, Danny Jansen, Shea Langoliers, Carson Kelly, Jose Trevino, Joey Bar, Nick Fuert. Yep, so that's it. So nothing else has changed except Travis DeArno has. Uh, I moved him way down to 32. So he's okay. he's that's, at- where, that's all I was going to ask is where he went. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. All right, so moving on to number 13, and that is Kiebert Ruiz. Last year, he hit seven home runs, six stolen bases, 33, 36, 251, and 112 games. You have him down for 14 home runs, three stolen bases, 54, 59, and 261. Uh, I mean, it, it's Kiebert Ruiz. Uh, yeah, I mean, go ahead, Greg. What do you got on, on Mr. Ruiz? <laughs> You've given you've given up trying. I'm just giving up trying <laughs> on Kiebert Ruiz like that. It's finally hit me. I'm like, we're really talking about Kiebert Ruiz in top fifteen. Like, uh, oh, Kiebert Ruiz though. Like, really? He's a, yep, but he does. He's a top fifteen catcher because it gets ugly. It's worse. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the the worst in some respects. It's like really good teams. <laughs> <laughs> and really bad teams like if they have like well if the really good teams have like a number one catcher that's good 
And if the really bad teams have a number one catcher, that's and if they're good, I mean, because they're gonna he's gonna play all the time and he's gonna hit in the middle of the lineup, you know? It's like as is Ruiz <laughs> like I mean, is he great? No, <laughs> but he he should hit like how different is say Kiebert Ruiz and Alejandro Kirk? I don't know. I mean, Kurt's lineup is a little bit better, yes. Ruiz will probably hit, you know, uh, Kirk will probably hit for like 20 more points on average. Okay. And their power is essentially the same. And Ruiz also has a handful of steals. I don't know. I mean, (laughs) I'm not saying he's great. (laughs) I'm just saying if you really want to break it down, like Alejandro Kirk is going in the top six overall for catchers. Keeper Ruiz is going at like 190 overall, and even in a two catcher league. So I don't know. I mean, in a two catcher league, I absolutely would draft Keeper Ruiz. <laughs> I don't have a problem with him. I would, you know, all these guys in this tier, I would draft in a two catcher league. I would draft them in a one catcher league if they're going after 200. And some of them will go after 200 because, you know, in a one catcher league, well, at least in a 12 team one catcher league, like in a, I would actually. So it's decent to point out right now is like the end of the two, the one catcher, 12, uh, 12 team league catchers. <laughs> That's it. They're done. So <laughs> if you, so if you're in a 12 team league, you're not going deeper than this. Uh, lucky you. <laughs> let, let us go deeper though. Who do we have? Oh, next? Yeah. Let's, let's go deeper than keep it. Ruiz gray. Uh, who I actually, I mean, I, I know I, I didn't give him much of an intro, but I mean, he is 24 years old. If, if we're looking at guys who could potentially grow into a little bit more pop, he did put up six stolen bases and put up a decent average. So, like, he could grow into a better player. But I just, like, it, it, uh, it was my – it's more about where we are with the position right now. Uh, moving on to number 14, uh, who you have as uh, Gabriel Moreno. Uh, not Gabriel Montero, who I, I don't know who that is. But uh, in 2022 <laughs> – I have, a, I have a I have a typo. <laughs> that what's going on? Uh, I I have uh, wait. Did I? No, I didn't spell his name wrong. Did I? Oh yeah, you definitely put Gabriel Montero one one hundred percent in the <laughs> in the write up. Oh, oh um, yeah, you know what? I did. <laughs> oh my bad. That's okay. Gabriel oh, yeah. Moreno. That's who we're talking about. Uh, last yeah. year. Uh, Last year in AAA in 62 games, he had three home runs, seven stolen bases, 35, 39, and a 315 average. Didn't really play much. He only had 25 games up in the majors and didn't really get in a whole lot. You have him down for 15 home runs, four stolen bases, 47, 54, and a 277 average. Gray uh, Gabriel Moreno is. I mean, he's he's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm not I'm not against drafting Gabriel Moreno either. I know we we kind of drew drew the line at Ruiz of of the last of the, you know, one catcher league, I might put Moreno in that group. Yeah, no, that's fair. You know what bothers me a little bit is Carson Kelly. I mean, not like person, not personally. I don't, he doesn't (laughs) personally talk to me. (laughs) I'm just saying though, it's like if the Diamondbacks, I mean, not that this makes any sense, but the Diamondbacks, you know, they should not be playing Carson Kelly over him. I mean, but uh, will they? I don't I don't know. I I don't know. Like I, I would have be reassured if like in the spring. I don't know. I could see moving up, uh, Moreno. Maybe. I don't know. Not above. I don't. I don't see who he's going to go above. Like really, honestly, is he going above Ruiz? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I I kind of see him as the fourteenth catcher. I don't really. I don't know who he'd go above, but. If the Diamondbacks were to say in the spring officially he's their number one catcher, I mean, I I can't necessarily like hate on someone like taking a flyer on him for like the last catcher in a twelve team catcher league because he is gonna he's gonna be on waivers anyway in a twelve team catcher league so you may as well take the flyer at the end of the draft if you really want to, um, but. Yeah, I just worry that Carson Kelly and him, at worst, could split time. At best, Carson Kelly's going to get he's going to get at least two hundred and fifty at bats, and that you know that takes away from Moreno. So yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's too bad that the Kelly is going to take away uh, some some of the the plate appearances here because I do think, given you know time behind the plate, there's really nothing can stopping him from putting up a very similar line to like Alejandro Kirk. Um, I just don't know if he's going to get the, the plate appearances to make that happen. Right. Yeah. No. Agreed. All right. Moving on, we got Jonah Heim. Last year, he had 16 home runs, two stolen bases. 51, 48, and a 227 average in 127 games. You have him down for 18 home runs, two stolen bases, 56, 62, 216, and 417 at bats. Uh, I mean, I'm not really all that interested in Jonah Heim, but I'm probably going to say <laughs> that every single guy that we have left. So uh, I guess uh, the one good thing is that he doesn't strike out, take some walks. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, it, there's yeah. I mean, there's nothing really to say about him. <laughs> I think I think he's probably. I mean, at worst, like last year, he had 16 homers and hit 227. If he gets if he hits 227 again and and gets into like, you know, three more homers. He's essentially MJ Melendez. I mean, he's not really that different, you know? Like, how different is he than some of the guys we've already talked about? Not really that different. So, is uh, does he have a chance to have, like, a top 10 catcher league, uh, a top 10 catcher type season? Yeah, absolutely. He has that. He has a possibility to do that. Uh, he's Last year, he was the 13th best catcher on the player Raider. So, you know, it's not that far off from what he did already. Yeah, it, it's possible. It's definitely possible. I mean, he's going to get playing time. So that's, that's you know, and when you're looking at catchers, playing time is one of the primary things. Like we said off the top, like if you get a catcher who's getting plate appearances and hitting in the middle of the lineup, just that by itself can be enough for a catcher sometimes uh, because the bar is so freaking low here, Gray. Um <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we got number 17, uh, Mr. Colorado, Elias Diaz. Uh, we draft him every year because he's a catcher in Colorado, and every year we are pretty disappointed. But hey, <laughs> he's still here, right? He's got, he last year he had 105 games, he had nine home runs, he had 29 runs, 51 RBI, and hit 228. Uh, you have him down for 16 home runs, 36, 48, and a 237 average, and 378 at bats so um not dissimilar from last year but you gotta you gotta be taking the ball out a few more times at least yeah i you know i was just looking up uh where rudy had him because anyone who's used the war room knows that uh the rudy rankings always love the colorado catcher <laughs> whoever it is <laughs> insert colorado catcher whoever it is the the, the rankings always love them uh, and this is not really that different. It has it um, uh, <laughs> it has him for let's see, yeah, twenty seventeenth uh, catcher off the board. Uh, so oh, essentially the same as me. It has him for let's see the uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't put him. I, I mean, it, his definitely potential for those numbers that uh. That Rudy has them uh, down for like they're not really that amazing. Ten, uh, eleven homers, two fifty eight or whatever. I mean that's pretty. I, that's pretty doable. It's just like he's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like this podcast. I mean he's just real. Like there's nothing. There's nothing really that exciting about. Like he doesn't have huge power. He has no speed. He doesn't really hit for a very good average, even though. Coors is, you know, Coors is going to help you about as much as any park's going to for uh, for average. Yeah, I don't know. He's he stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Elias Diaz stinks, but you know what? He does play every day, and it's in Coors half the time. So yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, you get him, you get him for about the half the season. You know, you get him for half of the games and then half of the games at home. So yeah, I mean, it, he's fine. I. I usually go in a different direction at this point. I'm not not loving the the you know 30 plus year old catchers in this range, uh, but uh, here we are. Moving on is Eric Haas. 
Uh, another 30. He's actually just about to turn 30 year old catcher this year. Or no, he is 30. Sorry. Uh, last year he hit 14 home runs, zero stolen bases, 41, 44, and 254. You have him down for 15 home runs, 46, 54, and 233 and 338 at bats. Uh, I remember when people were talking Eric Haas like he was going to be Dalton Varsho. That didn't quite <laughs> get out, Gray, uh, but still an acceptable catcher as a uh, as as catchers in this range go. I mean, he's he kind of ranges in in the home runs. He hit twenty two in twenty twenty one. He hit fourteen last year, so somewhere in that fifteen to twenty range. He's not necessarily had a terrible average for a catcher. He hit two thirty one and and then two fifty four last year. He's just kind of he, you don't really know what to expect, um, and he's he's definitely a little more volatile. I feel like than some of these other guys, which is saying something because catcher in itself is volatile as hell. But like he had two sub two hundred months. He had one where he hit, and then two where he hit almost three hundred. Like he's so right. He's you just you grab him when he's hitting well. Like that's that's Haas. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's a Haas potato. <laughs> Haas potato. Uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, he's like the kind of guy who, like like you said, if he gets, uh, like, if he's hot, then, like, in a shallow league, he's totally fine. And, like, you know, for, like, a week or two. Like, I feel like he's the type of guy who shows up on, like, my – my buy in my buy column, like at least like for like <laughs> at least a, a month straight, like he yep. gets hot and then like he just disappears and he is so difficult to have in like a deeper league. <laughs> I mean, Draft I goals. remember last year, like, uh, like in my, in a two catcher league, I had him and it was just like, it was painful <laughs> for, for long stretches at a, at a time. So yeah, I, I think he's, He's probably like at the end of the year, his stats end up around like the twentieth best catcher. But he goes anywhere from like the fifth best catcher to like the fortieth best catcher. And it's like no nothing in between, you know? Yeah, just so hot and cold. Uh, yeah, so he's he's really like the stringing catcher. Like if you're DFS or you're in a shallow league and you're just moving him in and out. Wait till you see him start to hit and then just toss him in and do not be scared to cut him back out there when it stops. Uh, Because like I said, he's just, it's just up and down, but he can't hit from time to time. Uh, Moving on to who we have at number 18, that's Christian Vasquez. I mean, I feel like this is kind of where I end up sitting in catcher a lot is just like Christian Vasquez is fine. He's going to play. He's good. He's, he's not going to kill me. Um, and that's that's what he is. He's going to be. He hasn't hit over ten home runs in three seasons. He sits in the two sixty to two eighty range. Uh, I'm, that's that's what Christian Vasquez. He's he's the boring catcher sitting here. If you've just waited and waited and waited, right? Yeah, he's actually he's probably good for like two weeks a year, and then he's. <laughs> He's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't ever, though. The good thing about him is he, I don't, he doesn't usually go to the extremes of being bad. Like he never gets to like hitting 160 for a month straight. He doesn't, he doesn't get that bad, but he gets like, you know, one homer per month bad. <laughs> yeah. He definitely does that one homer a month thing. And it's, it's always the day that you, you sat him on your bench and you didn't get the, <laughs> missed the homer. Um, but he's like, like I said, he's just, he's fine. He's not going to hurt you. He's just not really going to help you that much either. Yeah. No, agreed. And, uh, again, we're going to say that a bit here as we move (laughs) on. Number 19 is Gary Sanchez. He's a free agent still, um, for what it's worth last year, he had 60 home runs, two stolen bases, 42, 61, 205. I had never, he never really blossomed into the Gary Sanchez, great catcher, fantasy that we thought we were going to get i mean he still can hit put a ball out when he catches it just uh there's a lot of strikeouts that come with him not catching it yeah he got really terrible real fast right he, <laughs> he got did. Awful. he got awful i mean i'm looking at his numbers and i don't 
I don't look at Gary Sanchez's numbers that often. <laughs> so, so you have to excuse me. You're not a Yankees fan? <laughs> no. So, I mean, I'm looking at him, and I'm like, wow, he hit 33 homers and 278 one year. And then he, and then he like, barely could hit 200 for, People like. People drafted four. him in, like, the top, the first round grade. Oh, you oh, oh, for sure. Oh yeah! It was oh, 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 people runs. were like, people were convinced he was like a top fifteen overall pick. Like, uh, okay, no one, no one learns anything. Honestly, don't don't talk about lessons because people don't learn them. I uh, yeah, Gary Sanchez. I'd probably draft him like as of like for now until maybe. Feb one, but at a certain point, you got to think he's headed to Korea or something. <laughs> like, is he, like, he going to play? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, you start to get to the point where you're like, well, how many teams actually need a catcher? So, I don't know. I would still probably draft him, but if people are listening to this podcast in, like, March, I don't know. I don't know where he is. <laughs> Just so you know, I don't know the future. So I, don't I gotta say, I and I th- they already have two catchers, so I don't I don't necessarily see it happening. Um, but this feels like a Cubs signing. Like the way the Cubs have approached this offseason, this what feels is like going a Cubs. Guy. With the Cubs, like the Cubs are have the most bizarre offseason. They're like, you know what? We finally have a decent quarter man prospect. <laughs> we got we got a guy who we're really excited about. This Matt Mervis guy. I mean, he looks good. We're excited about him. So we're gonna go out and sign two of the worst corner men <laughs> that are on the market to block him. That's what we're doing. Like, what is that? What is that all about? I mean, <laughs> what's going I, on there? I really don't know, Gray. Like it's it's like we're going for the all reclamation team. It's like it's like they're building a, a roster from like the 2018 draft, like the 2018 fantasy drafts. Because um, like if you got Hosmer and Bellinger and Trey Mancini like four or five years ago, not not, not too bad. You could you could work 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 with that. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on, Gray. I mean, it's going to be Dansby Hap say it and then like i don't know what happens after that in in the whole lineup um but like, like gary sanchez feels like another reclamation project like a hosmer like a bellinger it feels like a very cubs-esque signing this offseason but we already did the tucker barnhart so maybe that's our our reclamation yeah. catcher well, uh, yeah when our next podcast the first baseman will discuss this more <laughs> okay, go ahead. Let's finish up this podcast. Let's try and get through this. Uh, 21, you have Danny Jansen. Last year, he had 15 home runs, one stolen base, 34, 44, and a 260 average. You have him for 15, 1, 43, 48, and a 243 average. So essentially what he did last year, Gray, um, I mean, he's he's kind of on the short side of the the, the playing time. That's That's really the issue, right? Yeah, no, definitely. He had such a good year last year that it felt like, I don't know, it felt like he should be ranked in the top 20-ish. Uh, well, and I was like, you know, I, I sort of struggled with where he's getting at bats, but he always seems to get, he seems to get his numbers, like even when he doesn't necessarily get that many at bats, like he got, you know, 184 at bats in 2021 and hit 11 homers. Last year, he only had 215 at-bats and he hit 15 homers. So, I mean, for a catcher, I'm not saying those are good numbers, but for a catcher, if you can get 15 homers and 300 at-bats, I don't know, that's kind of like a top-20 catcher. Yeah, I mean, he played less than half the season, went 15 to 60. It, it just sucks because you know you can't play him every day, so you're almost – like in a one catcher league, you're then forced to roster him and another guy, or you have to like constantly be moving him in and out and waiting to see if he's playing that day or not. So that's really the biggest issue with Jansen is just like it's that management issue. Like, are you going to check every day and see if he's playing? Because if you're not, he's not the guy for you. But if you are, he's he's a good guy to move in and out of your lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, agreed. All right, moving on to Shay Langoliers, who I think is actually a little bit of a uh, a guy that moves up a bit for Rudy. Um, 
potentially you have him down at 22. Rudy's got him up at, I believe, 15th among catchers. Uh, last year, he had six home runs. He hit 218. He had 14 runs, 22 RBIs. You have him down for um, 17 home runs, a stolen base, 46, 54, and a 224 average and 394 at-bats. Where are you at on Shea Langoliers and this pathetic A's roster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's the uh, well, that, that, well that's the thing with like it's like i wish i wish danny jansen would get traded to the a's <laughs> give danny jansen 500 at bat uh yeah i mean langoliers is pro- i don't know i mean he could hit 180 and he'll probably still get 400 at bats like i don't see them taking him out of the lineup at all uh so i don't know he's got he's got good power I'd be really interested in seeing if he can hit. Like I have him for, I have him down for two twenty four. Like you mentioned, I'm that might be a little bit optimistic. <laughs> like he could hit, <laughs> he could hit two hundred. I don't know. Uh, he might hit one eighty even. So yeah, I, I, I don't mind the flyer on Shea Langoliers. I think there's, a, I think there's a, at least there's a little bit of upside. So it's like why not? Um, but yeah, I, I don't think the upside. Unless he can really make better contact, like his upside really might be maxed out because I think the more at bats he gets, the worse he's going to hit, unfortunately. Yeah. And we kind of talked about how like Cal Raleigh was like the one catcher guy that, that gives you upside and it's kind of the, the, the last the guy you can take towards the end. I feel like that's kind of Shay Langoliers in a two catcher league. Like, He's going to get drafted. He has some upside, but he is so just – it could be a great season. He could end up as a a top 12 catcher, or he could hit, you know, like you said, like 180, even with all the plate, plate appearances and games, and just not provide a whole lot. I do think the power is legit. Um, I, I will say he's he's kind of a guy that is another one that has improved when he's hit – bad stretches in the minors, but I just don't know if it's going to happen this year and if it's going to happen in in that Oakland lineup where there's, I mean, there's nobody to be worried about. So I I just don't know where it's going to come from, but I don't hate it in a two catcher league as kind of a, as a flyer guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. All right, moving on to 23, which is Carson Kelly. We kind of talked about him a little bit earlier and just that we wish he would get out of the way to some extent, but he's probably not getting out of the way, Gray. It's Arizona. Uh, Last year he had seven home runs, two stolen bases, 40-35 and 211. You have him down for 14-1, 43-46, 229, and 332 at-bats. I mean, again, Carson Kelly's going to play whether he should or not. We, you know, that's, that's another thing. He's, he is a good catcher, defensive catcher, which is, I think why he gets so much time, but the, the bat just hasn't flourished. Like uh, some people thought it might. Yeah. I I was probably one of those people. I I thought at one point he'd be decent. I mean, he did hit 18 homers in uh, 2019. Uh, I don't know. Can we go back to that? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, yeah, that, that, that seemed really nice. Can we do that again? 18, <laughs> yeah. 18 is a solid catcher, catcher line, Gray. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean that that you know, and that sort of goes to the uh, the bigger point of this whole podcast. It's like if any catcher can hit, it can hit like seventeen homers and two fifty. It doesn't sound great, but that's like a top ten catcher league uh, season. So it's not that bad, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. I mean, I. Uh, I, I was with you on Carson Kelly. I thought the 18 home runs was, you know, maybe a sign that the power had finally come in. He was finally going to stay healthy. That that hasn't really happened. But here we are. And I, again, I think it's it is what it is. You're going to get playing time. You're going to get a kind of two, not a great average, not a whole lot of anything really. You just you're getting <laughs> playing time. Like I, I don't know what else to say here, Gray. What are you getting more than playing time for Carson Kelly? Uh. Uh, He's not even hitting ball, it, it ball, like the middle of a, of a terrible lineup. Ball, balls caught? I don't know. <laughs> Pop ups? I don't know. I don't, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Put outs? I don't Nothing really. Yeah. Uh, yeah right, so, unless you're playing in a defensive catcher league, probably not, not worried about Carson Kelly a whole lot. Uh, probably <laughs> the same with the next guy, which is Jose Trevino. Last year in 115 games, he went 11 home runs, two stolen bases, 39, 43, 248. 
you have him down for 12 home runs, three stolen bases, 41, 44, and a 256 average. Uh, again, I'm not overly excited about Jose Trevino, um, but he's going to play. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he should. You know, it's uh, I, he, he kind of like gets – it's like a 60-40 split, I think, over there. In, uh, in Yankee land, um, you know, last year, like you said, he got, uh, what, 335 at-bats? Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that was him really playing well. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of what you I – would, I would put, you know, 335, maybe I, I gave him 364 uh, for at-bats. So, I, you know, that's a, an extra, like, week <laughs> of at-bats. I, I wouldn't expect too much. I mean, he is – He's more or less the number one catcher, but that's only because for lack of options. Like I wouldn't, you know, it, it wouldn't shock me if the Yankees were like, "We're bringing back Gary Sanchez." <laughs> no, actually, that would shock. <laughs> that me. would kind of shock. They, they hate Gary Sanchez, but I, <laughs> I'm saying though, like it, it wouldn't shock me if they like traded for someone at the at like the midway point of the season or something. I don't know, like. They they like Trevino a lot. Like they're they're definitely they want to play Trevino. He is their number one guy, but he's also very limited on a, an offensive ceiling. So if anything else comes along that's anything like close to decent, I could see him becoming a number two. Like right now, he is number one, and he's probably going to be the number one. But I'm just saying, if you're drafting in a draft and hold league. You could get to, you know, July and be like, well, Trevino's not the starter anymore. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they like him, but it's like to a certain extent, uh, you know, how much do they like him? I don't know. Yeah, there's there's like the, the catcher line, but then there's always the Yankee, you know, will they, are they okay with getting that production or will right. they try and upgrade exactly. thought process? Uh, I'm with you on that. I mean, there's worse, I guess, if you're waiting this long. He's going to give you 10 home runs. He's going to 240, 250, I suppose. I mean, there, there's worse things to get from a catcher at this point. But, again, that also just kind of goes back to, like, why are you reaching for guys earlier when, like, Kiebert Ruiz is going to hit 15, 260, and you're going to get 10, 250 from a guy going, like, after everybody's gone twice over. Um, mm, yeah. We're, uh, we're also uh, – we're we're stretching people's believability that we could do a podcast about catchers for an hour and a half. People hey. are gonna be like, what? Yeah, yeah, how yeah. Long, how long are we? Ta- how long are we gonna talk about Jose Trevino? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just move on, Gray. Uh, we got two guys left in your last tier. Let's talk about them real quick, and then we'll maybe just cherry pick a couple from uh, the remaining tiers here. Joey Bart at twenty five, Dick Fortes at twenty six. Uh, you have Joey Bart down for 12 home runs, two stolen bases, 38, 41, 219. Fortes, you have down for 11 home runs, four stolen bases, 44, 41, 243. So very similar lines from these guys. What do you got to say about uh, Joey Bart and Nick Fortes before we get into some some of the late round guys? Uh, well, Joey Bart is like, you know, what happened there? <laughs> what, 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 what happened, bro? Because he was supposed to be good, wasn't he? Like that I remember was, that. I remember he was like right underneath Adley. I remember that, right? I, I I didn't make that up in my head. Like that's a real thing that happened. That was a real thing that people talked about. <laughs> right. So yeah. So that you know is a little bit puzzling. I don't know what happened there, but he's now he's got an everyday job, and you know the Giants are not good, so that gives him an opportunity to move up into the lineup. Like he could hit. Like, you know, I don't know. I mean, they brought in Conforto and um, they got Peterson back and, you know, they and oh, they brought in Hanniger too. But, yeah, maybe right, right below them uh, in the lineup, if he hits, that is. I mean, he's got a hit. He, so far, he hasn't hit anything. Like, he's been really bad. <laughs> but there was hope at one point in the minor leagues. Like, he was – he did look like – a uh, a guy who could come in and really like crush the ball like it it it, it appeared at one point like he was going to hit 25 homers or more uh, in the majors um, 
But that hasn't come. He hasn't come close to that. <laughs> so, you know, who knows with that? But, you know, maybe. And then Nick Fortes, you know, he had a good, like, partial year last year that the pro raider, Mr. Pro Raider, <laughs> wants to take to the next level. He had, uh, <laughs> you know, the nine homers last year, nine homers and five steals and – I don't know. You never know. You never know, man. This is so late in drafts that it's like, I don't know. I mean, right now I would take, I would probably take the, uh, I would take the Bart pick first uh, as I have them ranked because, you know, he is the everyday catcher and uh, the Marlins have Jacob Stallings, but Jacob Stallings stinks. The Marlins have a lot of players who have like, there's a lot of openings there. For Nick Fortes to like hit, for he could play first base because Garrett Cooper is always injured. Uh, you know, Garrett Cooper could go to the outfield and get injured in the outfield, and Fortes could play first base. <laughs> like, there's ways for Fortes to get into the lineup. So it's not necessarily like he has an everyday job right this second, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nick Fortes ends up with around 300 at bats, which is, you know, I mean, not quite everyday catcher at bats, but that's only about a hundred at bats off of an everyday catcher. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if like you did like a one catcher draft and hold and you got like Trevino and Fortes and you got like a half of the, like the first half from Trevino and the second half from Fortes type of thing. uh, Because Trevino gets, you know, sat on the bench and as the Yankees make a move, uh, and Fortes eventually just takes the job and, and kind of goes with it. Uh, I, uh, Trafort, uh, Lord, Trafort, you're saying Trafortes. <laughs> right, exactly. For Vino. Um, or or for Vino. <laughs> for Vino. Um, I, I still want to believe in Joey Bart a little bit. Like, we're only two years removed from him hitting 295 with 10 home runs in like 65 games in Triple A, but the K rate's awful. Like, he just has to hit. Like, I don't know if he's going to actually hit the ball enough for it to matter. Um, But like you said, there is a little bit of wiggle room that between injuries, like the people that that are playing for San Francisco, like he could move up a little bit if he just finds it. So that gets us to 25 or 26, Gray. Let's just take a couple real quick here from the back end and, and talk about some late flyer guys. Actually, when you're talking, when you talk about catchers, they're all from the back end because they're all (laughs) shit. (laughs) Okay, no. So the Mets went out and they got Omar uh, Navarez, but I don't think I think they're going to get to June and be like, "What are we doing here, guys? We have Francisco Alvarez. Why don't we play him? (laughs) Like he's good." And Navarez is like a platoon catcher. Come on, like <laughs> the Mets, are, the Mets are supposedly going for it, and they're and they're sitting on their prospects. That doesn't make any sense. So Alvarez, I like him. Andy, uh, Andy Rodriguez, uh, the Pirates rookie, uh, also a prospect who I like. The uh, the Pirates are dead set against playing any rookies uh, and ensuring that they can maintain their control as long as possible. So he's not going to be up immediately. And they went out and they got Austin Hedges uh, for their starting catcher job. So there's probably a good chance that Andy Rodriguez isn't up until May, June, June, probably. Uh, But he's ready. I mean, he's, he's good to go. He could be, you know, like Adelaide uh, Rushman from uh, last year, he was like, what did he have? He came up in like May or something, and he was the tenth best catcher last year. So you don't need, you don't need like a ton of at bats to be a top ten catcher. Uh, like if you can get a solid three hundred at bats, you can be a top ten catcher. So Andy Rodriguez could potentially you know, be a flyer at the end of your draft or like a flyer in a two catcher league where you grab him at the end of your draft and then you bench him right after the draft and you pick up a guy off of waivers for like six weeks. Like you pick up like a Austin Nola off of waivers or a Jacob Stallings off of waivers and you let him play for six weeks and then you just bench Andy Rodriguez for those six weeks that he's down in the minors or however long he's down the minors. I don't know 
the service time nonsense that the pirates are doing, but they're doing nonsense. Let's just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and then there's also Bo Naylor, who looked like he was going to be the starting catcher for the Guardians, and then they went out and got a guy. <laughs> they got a guy named uh, Zanino, uh, Mike. So I don't know, you know, I don't think, uh, I think Bo Naylor is like, lower on the uh, totem pole of these other prospects but again i mean it doesn't take much to be a good catcher so if he starts hitting we all know what zanino is i mean he's nothing good it's not like he's gonna like you know block him for always and ever so i i like you know for so for some prospect uh, buys like later on in a draft and then there's also logan ohop uh the angels guy I don't know. I don't know what the angels are doing. And I also don't have like a ton of like, you know, uh, I I don't love Ohop. I'm not sure exactly what it like. Supposedly he's going to be the starting catcher right now and have Max Stasi on the bench. I don't think that's going to happen. I think if anything, they're going to split time. Maybe Stasi is the backup to Ohop. I don't know. I, I, but I also don't have like a ton of faith. Like Ohop was supposedly a decent uh, catcher prospect when they went out and got him from uh, from the Phils for uh, Marsh. So, I mean, there was some hope there, but his numbers are kind of like, I mean, they're okay. I don't know. Maybe you get 15 homers and a 240 average. Again, for a catcher, it's not awful. So, yeah, there's some there's some names. you have any uh, beat on? Uh, no, I mean, I like I like the O'Hop call. Actually, uh, it sounds like like you kind of like him, kind of don't. I actually, I mean, I'm I'm fairly interested, uh, especially since he's going pretty much undrafted, even in two catcher leagues, because at least right now he is penciled in to be the starter. Uh, he hit 26 home runs. He had seven stolen bases over just just over a hundred or, or oh, just over a hundred games last year. He hit uh, 275 and hit 306 you know, respectively across Philly. And then when he got traded to the angels. So I'm kind of interested in Logan as a late round flyer and two catcher leagues. Cause he has played discipline. He has the power has a little bit of speed as catchers go. So uh, I don't, I don't hate that one. Uh, Luis Camposano is another one. If he can just get the playing time in San Diego, I think he can put up some numbers, but they seem very much where like Austin Nola is there defensive catcher guy and they just let him go out there for a hundred plus games. But if Capisano can get into playing more, I do think he can put up, you know, a fairly solid catcher fantasy season. Cause he's always hit for average. He's has a little bit of pop. Like, I feel like he can do that. He's just waiting for his turn. I don't know when that's going to happen with the Padres, yeah. but those two guys, if they fall in the, the, the playing time. And I think O'Hop is, is on that 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 trajectory where he could be, I, I think they could fall into some decent seasons and and potentially be at that back end catcher one, top end of the catcher two range uh, coming next year. Yeah, no, agreed. I I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't have anything profound to say because they're catchers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was Fine. trying to make the end of the podcast, you know, a little bit entertaining, Gray. Uh, Uplifting. I mean, we we got yeah. into like the twenties and I was like, oh, Kubert Reese shit. Like <laughs> so trying to trying to make uh, catcher thirty two or whatever Logan's going right now feel feel fun fun, Gray. Um but yeah, that's that's the catcher's podcast. If you have any specific questions, find us on Twitter. I am at Raz Beadon. Gray's of course the at Razball account. Follow us on youtube.com slash Razball Fantasy. The shows will be getting posted out there before they hit the podcast streams. So you can get a little bit of a preview before the actual podcast comes out. And uh, other than that, best of luck as we get approach draft season. If you're already drafting right now, good luck. And uh, we'll talk to you later, Great. All right, ladies.